Hi everyone, I'd like to discuss a very intriguing and unique species of human called Homo forensis. The Homo forensis was the smallest human ever to existed, at the fully grown female estimated height of 106 centimetres, or 3 foot 6 inches, that's about 3.5 rulers, weight of 30 kilograms. It is fair for the science community to call them the Hobbits. They had small brains and large teeth for the sides, very shrugged forward shoulders, practically no chin, a receding forehead and quite big feet to support their legs. These small creatures lived on a small island in Indonesia called Flores. Currently Flores is a lush green island with majestic mountains, making it look like a fantasy. Despite all the doubts concerning the weird features of the Homo forensis, according to fossil records they were actually able to make stone tools for basic hunt- hunting etc. And also they were able to create fires to heat them up. The reason why the Homo forensis is so small is because of island dwarfism. Island dwarfism is an evolutionary process that occurs when the island's number of predators are lacking, very isolation and limited resources. On islands, organisms can either get bigger or smaller with the shrinking evolutionary process being called insular dwarfism and the growth evolutionary process being called insular gigantism. These two evolutionary processes can happen anywhere, but only if they have the three main variables that I just mentioned. For example, it can happen in caves, desert oases, isolated valleys or isolated mountains. There is a rule for insular growth where smaller organisms develop bigger bodies and the bigger organisms develop smaller bodies. The reason behind the evolutionary process of dwarfism is due to lack of food, which then enables smaller sizes. When the body is smaller, it requires less nutrients and general food to keep it running. This perfectly suits the ecosystem of some isolated islands, like Flores. Or other examples of insular dwarfism which coincidentally live on the same island of where the home of Francis was located, which is Flores. This was an elephant named Stegodon Francis Insularis. I might have just butchered that name, but not to be mistaken for the bigger and more recent species Stegodon Florensis, which was way bigger. Other species to fall under the insular dwarfism is called the island fox. The island fox is alive today, however it is on the brink of extinction. The island fox lives on Channel Islands off the coast of California and is the size of a normal lean cat. Obviously there are many more examples that each has unique traits and to name some animals, dwarf mammoths, pygmy hippopotamus, Balinese tigers. I'd like to discuss more of these animals in the future videos, but now we should go back to the topic of Homo forensis. In 2003, a combined Indonesian slash Australian research team discovered the remains of LB1, an adult female Homo forensis, inside of the cave in Flores called Liang Bua, which I probably just butchered again. The age of the skeleton is unknown to my knowledge due to differ between sources, for example, one, is, one source from Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History states that the Homo forensis is 80,000 years old. However, a primary source from Dr. Matt Tochiri states that it is 18,000 years old. He also states that the reason why the Homo forensis is so interesting is because of the fact that it is so small and is so recent compared to 1.5 million years ago to 2.5 million years ago in Central Africa when humans started to evolve and were the same size as Homo forensis. Anyway, there has only been one specimen of Homo forensis found and in the same place. At the time of making this video, therefore, there is very little known about the species, so naturally it spawns a handful of questions about the Homo forensis. For example, how did the Homo forensis get onto the island? Did they make a raft? Or were the Indonesian islands all connected at one point with the land bridge, like the Bering Land Bridge, which I will do a video next, hopefully. Number two, did the Homo forensis have a language, make paintings, and have other forms of cultural expression? So this covers everything I want to discuss about the Homo forensis. This is my first video and the start of a new series discussing paleontology and paleoanthropology videos about individual species. This doesn't mean I will only have do videos on weird dinosaurs and other species humans. I have also planned to make videos on pterosaurs, crocodilians, sea reptiles, prehistoric mammals, animals that lived in the Ice Age and even about weird creatures that are alive today. I hope you like the style of this video that is designed to inform people about the subject that they would not have found out upon by just reading an article. I have also used multiple sources to craft a correct and informative video that will hopefully not be frowned upon for not being up to date.